All right, hold on. I should have log into D and D Beyond. We're here. Ah! Oh my god! Welcome. This is my show. Hey, I'm the you DM gotta now. Say anything. No. You just gotta sit there. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. to the cred campaign. Cause yeah. we thought we needed to bring some cred to Murder Hobo. Oh no. Am I am I dying? Am I too low? Am I too no, high? Cthulhu no, Cthulhu falls, Cthulhu fine. rises. Oh, Cthulhu rises, everybody dies. Uh before we get too far into it, uh man, I forgot to do the song this morning. I was thinking about doing uh Down Under, but with Cthulhu. I come from a land down under where tentacles claw and fish plunder. <laughs> what? what? Anyway, <laughs> I didn't have time to write it. I forgot to do it until just now. <laughs> All right, before I get started, natural, regular, moral, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. You can check out our, our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about some D&D, &D, figure out what awful things I have planned for these adventures ahead. I will be happy to do that on the Discord channel. If you want to join in on a game, not this one, you don't have the cred to join. Yeah. Or the Calamity one, unfortunately. Word. Ow. Uh, but next week, there'll be plenty of uh, one-shots that you can hop in. You can contact us at Twitter or at mhoboinc at gmail.com. If you want to get some cool, awesome uh, stuff, you can't get this. This is mine. But you can also get some Murder Hobo Inc follow our store if you want to look at our podcast and look at it look at it do that yeah yeah you don't don't listen to podcasts <laughs> that's that's the fool's mistake everyone makes they're like headphones podcast going no the real enjoyment is just staring at that podcast it's great it's wonderful uh <laughs> real quick I'd like to thank the sponsors pirate dog dice for when you roll like dog poop get pirate dog dog poop die and if you need to then make the room smell nicer because of it, you get Adventure Sense. The old tavern is real nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then if, like me, Thanks. you lost your uh, campaign journal and you need to rewrite one, I suggest getting the Shine Project. It has a nice way of answering and asking all the right questions to make your campaign enjoyable. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I am coming off an illness, so I can't talk for very long bouts of periods of time, which is why I am going to have the characters introduce themselves. Let's first start off with Carol. Carol, introduce yourself. Tell me about a character. Maybe tell us a little bit about what happened to your character last time. What, wait, uh, do you think I remember what happened two weeks ago? What? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I need to write the notes down. Come on. Hi everyone, my name is Carol. I am a, what the hell am I? Oh yeah, I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter. Uh, I play Anja Jaeger in this campaign. Uh, she is a ranger and lots of the monster hunter ranging, ranger, ranging, ranger. God, I can't talk tonight. Uh, I've been working way too hard at work these days. <laughs> Uh, a little bit about what happened last time. Um, we chased the thief that got the possession that uh, our captain, I don't know, I wasn't part of that, uh, but our captain really wanted. And we did catch him, but he basically lives through this creepy house. Oh, of course, potholes and tentacle monsters and potholes that tried to eat me. Um, that sounded very hentai-like, didn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Fran. Uh, but yeah, we went through that creepy, awful house, and we're the basically about to confront the uh, the thief. All right, that is Anja, 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 Anja John, and Jan. Next, let's go over to uh, Cleo is busy typing away, so we'll go hit Riley next. Ernie, you go first. <laughs> yeah, so uh, my name's Ernest, and I'm playing Riley, the uh, half-elf warlock. And uh, my favorite things to do are try and navigate the ship or make potato stew. And uh, this 
episode. I'm going to try and uh, loot as many interesting looking books out of this library we're, we're in before we get dragged off somewhere. <laughs> All right. And down to Bran. Hello. I play Bran. Everyone knows my name is DJ. Anyways, I am the physician monk. And last week could have gone better for me at the end. Could have gone better for me at the be- uh, towards the middle, too. Of course, I had to go save somebody and get my butt whooped by a tentacle. And then I had to see something creepy. Thank that you, Kyle. Great. Thank you for that, <laughs> by the way. Our uh, highest wisdom character who can't make a flipping wisdom save. <laughs> None of you can, honestly. No, the rest of us are fucked, but it is amusing that the high one with the best wisdom save can't make one. Not the best wisdom <laughs> save, actually. That's, a, 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 I believe, a not yet. That. Not, not I have yet. A, I have a plus four on wisdom save. So oh, that's the same as me. There you go. <laughs> okay, they're tied. <laughs> All right. And finally, Caitlin, Cleo, introduce yourself real quick. Caitlin or Cleo, the as no, no, no. I'm Kyle. You're <laughs> Caitlin. <laughs> she is Cleo. busy uh, updating her character sheet, so she's not actually I'm paying attention. I'm trying on the phone, and it's really confusing. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. My work computer doesn't believe in Gmail; it blocks it, so I had to like do this and I don't know I don't know how you work the DD app on the phone apparently I'm too old now to do this though anyway <laughs> gosh poor Carol I know I t- technology is so beyond me now clearly because I am old how this work oh god I'm the me oldest one call. here you make good call it just like... occurred to me, other than our, than Frank, who's producing this, I'm the oldest one here. I'm the youngest. Yeah, we know that. You should be. <laughs> you should be very we'll good be at happy tech. To remind you guys that you are both the youngest and the oldest. <laughs> but you can tell because both of them take up all the time talking. So. Anyway, I'm the Azamar sorcerer, and you got purple eyes now. So I'm just gonna show it off. <laughs> I have purple eyes too. Can't you see? Yeah. <laughs> how do I how do I make myself go up a level? Can't you just do it, Kyle, on your end? I did uh, already. Okay. Is it gonna Although you have to decide all the other stuff, which is like choosing a level or uh, your spell and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. That? But that can be done later. Okay. So I guess uh, that's everyone. We should probably get into it. You're not interested in what's oh. happening tonight. Hey, Kyle, you should give a shout out to your favorite person in the world who's in chat. Heidi's here. Oh, I was going to say thank you again, D, for drawing these character portraits. <laughs> They're terrible, awful people to have to do all that work for and talk to them. <laughs> but the end result is so worth it that, yeah, no, I'll still call them horrible, horrible people to work with. And but- finally... uh Heidi, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I've missed you, but go fuck yourself. Uh, we're ending at 10 o'clock so you can catch your critical role and go to bed with your nice warm glass of milk and a cookie, whatever you need. Don't get the crumbs on the quilt. That's terrible. Don't do that. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have vinyl wrapped your couch for no reason at all. Oh my god, shut up, Kyle. <laughs> it's been a while. I haven't been mean to anyone other than me. Carol, that's her name. Hey, Carol. <laughs> no, it's Anja. That's what my name says on the board. So. Oh, Corral. Okay. Corral. Okay. Corral. <coughs> All right. Give me one last swig of water here, and we will get started. I don't know. Oh, it's so good. So good. All right. So last time we left off, you guys abandoned your captain and a dead dwarf, or dying dwarf as far as you knew to go chase after a thief running down the way as you did so you found several fun things along the way the guards were very reluctant to actually help you in person uh however you did manage to get a pony to help you along and chase after the thief 
but tentacles got in the way, just like every awesome porno video you've ever seen. Hentai! The cabbages didn't get knocked over. That was a good thing. My cabbages! And the thief got away, which you later found into Fen Manor. As you did so, you found some horrifying things starting on the second level. You didn't even see the horrifying things on the first level, and if I can give a recommendation, I might skip that area, but that's up to you. Honestly, skip the area, because I don't remember what was down there. Anyway. Make it up. Like shit. every good GM. Shit. Let me get no, my uh, random rollers up here. Okay. <laughs> uh, searching around the rooms, you found many a horrible thing. You saw a picture of Mundo Fen as a young man, beautiful, handsome, only seven years ago to now to what he is today, a squat eight years ago? I am glad Riley is taking notes. I thought it was seven years ago. No, it was eight years ago. I'll I'll trust him. But the technology was discovered about 15 years ago. Famous gnomish technology. It's called uh, capture scrolls. Capture scrolls, yes. This was a $3,000 capture scroll, although since it's captured, it's not worth it anymore. (laughs) You did remove it. uh, Didn't tear it apart. Uh, And searching the last room, you heard a click in the distance. This led you to a secret door that you had passed earlier that led to an upper floor to a study where there were many dead animals pinned to the wall similar to a bug collection. Uh, A work study, some various shelving, a workbench, um, then another door which went open led to a large library which Bran led the way on. Uh, a scream was heard. The thief fell out of the curtains that showed the outside cove, and Bran went down to apprehend him, gazed out the window between the curtains, and saw a horrendous creature sinking into the water and nearly lost his mind. Well, a small portion of it. And at that point, you had captured the thief. Or so you thought, because uh, at level four dread, you are staggered, you drop everything, and the little boy runs right up the stairs and into Anja's awaiting arms, attempting to run away. Huh? I I don't recall that. Oh, no. That's happening right now. (laughs) Oh, so wait, what happens exactly again? The little boy, uh, because Bran is no longer holding him from being staggered in dread, uh, uh, attempts to escape out the room as quick as he can. So I can be coming down at this point? You can be coming down at this point. And try to snag him? Mm, Try to snag him. Go ahead and make an athletics check. Or, no, an athletics. You're grabbing. Mm, Because I like to use regular... Oh, athletics? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not really good at that at all. Oh, I miss him because that's only a four. Zero? Wait a minute. Oh, hang on. I've got some fucking wrong character. I thought I switched my character. Hang on. I know I have an athletics. Yeah, good job on my point. I still have Celeste from last weekend. Come on, you silly. Uh, You mean Balest? That way we could all remember. Balest, that's right. I heard that's what you were going to rename her. Uh, D&D Beyond is being silly. You have a plus five to athletics. Thank you. Okay, so that's that's still only a nine. Good enough for the little boy. You managed to catch him as he tries to run. Bran, you are downstairs currently. The bag is still there where some stones have fallen out of. And at that point, we leave you guys here in Fen Manor, in the most unwelcoming town you have ever been in. What would you guys like to do? Uh, book. Book, book. Book to the kid. What, what books are nearby? <laughs> exactly. <coughs> well, let, guess, me, let me ask. I guess my first I, question would be, how long would I be staggered for? About half an hour that it would take for the okay. uh, creature to go back into the water. He disappears. Half an hour later, you're good to go. Uh, and so, like I said, I'd like to add that you have broken into 
someone's manor house that still lives here. Yeah, and they're probably coming back anytime, and uh, they may so, already be here. And this looks like a really rich and powerful dude based on that $3,000 whatever it was. <laughs> so my question is, do you guys want to stay here to question the kid for a little bit? While Riley, I assume, loots as much as he possibly can. Do you want to explore a little bit? Do you want to stay here and actually take the time to investigate and go through and kind of comprehend what you know? Um, what are you, What's your guys' plan? I don't think I want to bring the kid with us. I want to invest. I think I want to interrogate him right here. Uh, I don't. Okay. Do I even know any of this is happening? Because these are two separate rooms. How, 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 um, how would I be able to perceive this library with the thief and Anja and Bran when I'm still in the study? You would be able to hear them, even with your low perception check. You know, it's just the next room over. The little okay. boy screamed and is now rushing up <laughs> before he gets tackled. Eh, not really tackled. And I saw that in the doorway. Where Anja snatched him? Sure. Okay, okay. So I know what's happening. I'm like, oh, cool. We got the thief. All, got the all, thief. All, all cool. I don't know. Yeah. Bran, do you actually scream when you see this hideous thing outside the window? Or are you quietly in terror underneath your mask where no one sees it? Yes. Um, Bran would be quiet. Um, in fact, he actually might take off his mask as he stares out the window, trying to get a better view. Now, really? let me ask, because I know uh, staggered is not one of the normal conditions in D&D. Correct. Correct. What does that impose? Staggered will impose. Let me pull this up here because I was totally ready for it and not totally. Oh, shoot. Nope. Misplaced that page. That sucks. Let's see. Do, 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 do. And staggered. Uh, you drop all held items upon reaching this and any higher level of dread. You can't take any bonus actions or reactions. Uh, oh, I suppose you could actually make another wisdom saving throw now. After a little bit of time has passed by, as you take off the mask, you can uh, drop down a uh, dread level. But at this point, a lot of that isn't really affecting you other than as a character, because the thing that has inspired the dread has disappeared under the water. Giving me the same results. So that's a total of eight on a wisdom save. Okay. And that was the save against the original saving throw. You drop down to three, so you're going to be okay for that. Uh, um, we'll talk about the rest of the dread later on at some point. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I'm screwed for weeks. <laughs> so, so now that now that Brand's at dread level three, does that mean he's not staggered anymore? He is not staggered anymore. I will kind of just stare out the window for a while, uh, in more or less disbelief, trying to rationalize what I've seen. But to keep an eye on that because I'm going to ask you exactly how Brand ends up losing these level of dread later, if not this session next. Um, so, Anja, you have the child there. Brand is. Staring out the window, maskless, although if you can see it with his back turned to you, we don't know. Riley? Well, I'm sure the, the hood, if he's, since I'm pretty sure that is what his character normally goes around as, the hood would be off, I'd see his hair. I'm like, huh. Uh, but I'm not going to bother him about Bright that. red hair, that's crazy. What color is his hair? I don't know. I'm asking Brand. Uh, Brand's hair is a unkempt. Uh, where's my description? <laughs> do I remember? I said, do you have a hair remember? color? Yes, yes, yes. No, it is a uh, bright red. Actually, it is like red. Oh, jeez! <laughs> Did you like cheat and read that or something? Wow! I read it when he first sent it to me, so that's how I know these things. I've memorized it all. Oh my god, the other two need to go red so it could have been the red-haired brigade, but because I've got red hair too. Uh, mine's not as bright though, I don't think. But uh, I look at him, I look at him for a minute, I look at the kid. They got a problem with purple hair? 
No, I think purple is <laughs> the best color ever. But I mean, that's I love purple. Um, so I look at the kid. I go, so um, I'm not going to hurt you. But and this kid, as you look at him, um, if you guys watch Shameless, this is Ian Gallagher at a very young age. <laughs> lots of freckles. Also red hair, surprisingly. Oh, enough. good God. <laughs> wow. Uh, but very small, probably seven to eight years old, and he is terrified. He's 11 to 13, according to the last episode. Is he 11 to 13? Oh, I sorry. I my goddamn mind. He, it, it was the same thief we saw earlier, about 10 to 13 years old, freckled young boy, paler than should be. That's, there you go. Hey, there, there we go. I'm Fixed not it. far off. Continuity. <laughs> so i'm gonna look i said i'm going to look at him and i'm going to so who hired you or whatever to steal this thing or did you just take it and why i i i i heard it was what are you what are you gonna do to me nothing nothing i mean give give us some answers here that's all i want Hmm. Roll persuasion. Oh yeah, please. this one will be the one I don't have any bonus for. Mm -hmm. Come on, you silly D D Beyond. Okay, here we go. I got the right character this time. Persuasion. Oh, I got a I got a plus. There you go. Plus one. Oh, I rolled a nat twenty. So twenty one. I'm being really, really nice here. You are being really nice and honestly. Really nice. This kid is terrified, and you may not know this, but you are the nicest person he's seen in a while, and I'm so sorry. And he gives you this big hug. Oh, I hug him right back. I feel so bad. That's he's when so you stab scared. you in the back. And then he stabs you, you in the, in the back. back. Cleo, and... you watch as this knife comes in. Silver knife. <laughs> I can't. All right, all right. I'll be Blood rolling up another everywhere. character. <laughs> He's like, well, I'm glad that's not my problem. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> wow. Where's Jeremiah? <laughs> In my room. Oh, actually, I don't know where he is. I don't know. I left him with people to take care of. Yeah, we, we dragged him back to the inn, and then we just chased after this thief and left him in the street. <laughs> he left, left him in the street. Left him with <laughs> Left him with the captain. I mean, yeah, I we left him with the captain. captain the captain course. and a di the distraught captain because one of her dwarven friends were dying mm -hmm. <laughs> in her arms. <laughs> she was a little distracted. <laughs> so, um, so I'm like, well, why did you take it? Because I heard it was worth a lot of money, and and Master Fen has a lot of money and I thought I could sell it to him so I could get out of here. This town yeah, is horrible. A... Oh, you're you're not kidding. It's it certainly seems that way. But where would you go? Do you have any parents? Oh, the 13, I guess he's 12 or 13. Do you have any parents? Ten. No, my mom. My mom died 4 years ago. I'm so sorry. I I I think <sighs> I think the fi the people in the town did did something to her because she knew something. What did she know? I don't know. She didn't tell. I, yeah, oftentimes parents don't tell their children everything, do they? I don't know. My parents are dead. I don't know what parents do anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, no, I'm not going to hurt you. Is there anywhere you can... Where are you staying now? On the, on the streets. Why don't you... I'll tell you what, we'll put you up and... I'll put you up... I'll pay to have, have at least put you up in the inn tonight. And then, I don't know. God, it seems like a terrible, terrible idea to bring you with us. That's up to you. We are leaving this island. Not an island. No a town. Sorry, a town. Port. Oh, I tell you, I keep thinking this is another island. Not I know it's not the island. I thought oh, that's right. We're st it's still on the uh connected to the mainland. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're Cleo, leaving this town. Maybe we can take you with us. 
Would you? Big eyes. I'd have to ask the captain if that's okay, but why don't you come with us tonight and we can put you up in the inn. Okay. As long as you just don't let that thing get me. Are you going to be okay going... Wait, what thing? The, the thing attitude. outside the window. I look outside the window. Well, it's a monster. Yeah, I yeah, I go down. If uh, if Anja gets close, like if I notice she gets close, I hurriedly put the mask back on, realizing somebody's nearby. Too late. <laughs> I didn't see the front of your face. I assume. Uh, well, I'm, I'm more more interested in looking outside. I don't see see this. I will like kind of turn away and just walk to another portion of the room, kind of look around. Okay. Uh, Anja, before you assume you don't see anything, roll no, perception don't check. Fucking no, I did. I fail. I'm gonna <laughs> fail on purpose because that's how it works in this game, folks. Yeah, you know when kids they roll on D and D Beyond. No cheating. They open up the closet <laughs> door, don't but cheat. they don't look in. It's like, oh, there's no monsters. I said, there's no monsters. <laughs> and I have a decent perception too. Oh, but that was a, well. That was a crappy roll. That was that's only that's a ten. That's a ten. Not a great roll. No, you just see <laughs> the lapping of waves out farther on the shore. The surf coming in. The bright moon shining down. In the dorsal fin, no. <laughs> in the dorsal fin, or spikes no. or something coming out of the water. You do see. Uh, uh, yeah, with a perception of ten, you don't see Jack Diddley. You're yeah, <laughs> I think I'm thankful this time. <laughs> I don't see Jack Diddley. All right, Cleo. I know what Riley's doing. I know what Anja's doing. I know what Brand's doing. What have you done since you've gotten in here? I saw you entered into the study. You see what everyone else sees: a workbench, some animals pinned to the wall, um, various other sundry things in the study. What are you doing? Uh, I would assume if there's like a bunch of books, I would look specifically for ones on magic, if not dark magic. You would not find any in the study here. And Riley, as you are also looking through these books, I will answer some questions for you guys. You find, um, let me see, where did I write this down here? You find uh, several tied letters together. Uh, you find the journal or the accounting book from earlier, um, and you find a list, smaller and various sized books on the shelf, all handwritten. Um, you would know, Riley, that they belong to the various families of the town, the main families, which is strange because the elf from earlier at the repository told you that all written material yeah, after the family the... died goes to repository. Right. Does so... not appear that was the case. Um, cool, but I grab a book and try and see what it is. Uh, you find uh, family journals, like the family Bible, almost. This starts at the beginning. Um, Roll a d4 for me. All right, d4. That's the pyramid looking one. Three. Three, okay. You find uh, <clears throat> the book of Lawrence Walby, who was a quartermaster on the ship of Aldo Fenn. What was his name? Lawrence Walby. W A L B Y. Oh. The last time you heard the Walby name was connected to... That accounting book? The accounting book. Because there was a person in that book named Isabel Walby. Isabel Walby, that is correct. From Same 23 years name. ago. From 23 years ago. Okay, so Lawrence Walby, what, what ship? Ah, shit, I didn't think of a ship name. <laughs> <laughs> the Monkey's Paw. <laughs> Oh, the monkey's paw. Got it. Immortality comes with... Uh... Okay, got it. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I was that clever. Yes, exactly. <laughs> monkey's paw. A lawful ship, if you 
kind of glance through the first pages and you see a turn where eventually Aldo Fenn and the crew turn to piracy. Oh, that's just quick glancing through. Uh, if you are helping him out, Cleo, you also find these journals. You find um, a bunch of rings underneath a clear glass cloche. Uh, gemstones here and there. Uh, and a barrel filled with water with hooks. That something leads down into the water. Just some fun random wait, things. Wait, a barrel of hooks? <laughs> a barrel full of water and then imagine a hook is hanging on the edge of the barrel and there's string tied to the hook that goes down into the water which you cannot see through you would have to pull up whatever is hanging off How the big hook. is this barrel? About two Not feet down. Uh, yeah. Mm, does anyone have fire? <laughs> Set it on fire. Uh, I mean, I have Eldridge Blast. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you, do. Um, okay, how about <laughs> this? I, I, I have Mage Hand. I have Mage Hand. I can lift it out from a distance. I'm a bag away from this barrel. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Mage Hand can only move up to 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. So am I able to you cast cantrip mage hand and, and lift up the hook yeah. you're able to lift up a hook you see a bag with the roman numeral four on it sopping wet uh uh okay um i guess i will set it down outside of the water and oh, try no. and open the bag with the mage hand <laughs> all right you move the mage hand to open up the bag. And Bran and Anjo, what are you guys doing? Oh, come on. I wanted to know what was in there, too. Well, you'll uh, find out. You're up there at top. You're in the doorway of the study and the library. No, you went down, didn't you? I went down, but then I still have the kit. Actually, I'm going to ask. The kit doesn't go down with you. Oh, all right. I was going to hold his hand and, and take. I will go back to the to kit and because, of course, I have failed to ask him probably what's your name <laughs> young sir uh, I'm I'm Dale Guthrie Dale Guthrie Dale Guthrie that feels like a joke there Dale it's not a joke <laughs> this is very name. serious to me you say that out loud your name sounds like a joke <laughs> I do not say that out that Andre does not say that out loud uh, well, it's nice to meet you, Dale. I'm Anja, and these are my friends. Nice and, to meet you, uh, Anja. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, you just have this thick accent. I I can't I can't it's pronounce okay. it right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It seems to get butchered a lot these days. Just like your parents. <laughs> 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 Oh, sorry. Kids, <laughs> I do not say as that. As soon as you say the word butchered, yeah, his face drops. I do not say that. No, no My I parents are dead. <laughs> well, I, will, I will go see how my friends are doing and uh, we can head back to the end. Although I am kind of curious of what's in the bag. Well, oh, which bag? The satchel. The bag of cargo stole. or the wet satchel? The satchel the satchel he stole. What it what it what it, what's this big important uh, pos, you know possession that the, the captain wanted? Yeah, you see a bag of stones. Pale green. Some of them have rolled out of the knapsack. I don't know if Bran picked any up while he was busy uh no. gazing out at things. Do I know anything about those stones? Like what kind or? Uh, roll a nature check. Check it. Yeah, I figured that was coming. Mm -hmm. uh, nature. Uh, that is one of my things. Oh. Jesus, my dice suck. What is that? Cave and seat nine. Probably not. Jade. Jade. Probably Jade. I mean, Jade is green like oh. that. 
That's true. Sure. And Jade, Jade is Jade is pretty easy to figure out. Huh. Yeah. That's about it, though. I don't know what they're for or anything like that. What they're per what they might have a purpose. I know that that, that there I is mean, purposes for them. Some spells. Uh, how's your arcana? My arcana yeah, it's is well enough. Oh, J okay. Most gemstones have some arcane significance, and some odd spells. Really depends on the wizard, sorcerer, or sorceress, uh, witch who's trying to cast a spell. <coughs> whether jade happens to be there special stone that kind of helps them cast that's right she's a she's a caster isn't she or was she the captain Anja? Captain is no her, uh, no kenza. kenza kenza captain kenza she wasn't a caster was she you have seen her cast a spell i thought so oh she's yes. got a familiar because the cat the the cat right god Carol's brain is melting down. The cat, I believe, is a familiar. Because that cat was not a normal cat. Bran, how's your search through the uh, library books going through? Bran? Uh, uh, I am lazily doing it. No real purpose unless something truly sticks out at me. What would stick out for Bran? Mm. <sighs> Titles, names that would bring familiar, possibly bring him out of his uh, mental days. Roll an investigation at disadvantage. Or perception, I suppose. You can choose. Since we're not actually really looking, we're just kind of finding something to latch on to. 14. 14. Yeah, there's several anatomy books that you find through here. Not all of them human, uh, a lot of marine life, but just general anatomy on creatures. And, yeah, Brad would probably head to that and start picking and just flipping through and browsing. Yeah, you find books from uh, Joe Pet where they talk about the anatomy of monsters. Joe Pet is this uh, kind of sandy place that when the drow came to this land um, under dark drow not really known drow in a desert their thing was taming monsters or just farming them in general think monster hunter almost although they tame most of the monsters they come across to be useful there's several of these Jopet books talking about the anatomy of bullets, uh, sandworms. There's a few theoretical books on what dragons would look like, but no one's seen a dragon's in a dragon's age. So uh, various marine life, like I said, and uh, various beast life. Nothing I get to the humans. marine life. Uh my mood changes and I start like hastily flipping through the pages seeing if anything matches what I've seen not a thing you saw bits and pieces you see a fish's dorsal fin that clicks you see shark teeth you see whales and just the size of this creature. I mean, whales come bigger size than that. And I'm giving you the uh, benefit of the doubt for your nature. Uh, whales, you kind of know the general size. They come bigger than that thing. So, But the creature you saw, it does have bits and pieces of some sort of fish here or there. But ultimately, it was all twisted in some weird fashion of a mimicry of natural life you feel like we're going to get a little hysterical and frustrated at not finding it and actually start tearing books out that have similar context flipping it when i did, when he doesn't find it throws it to the ground cool <laughs> anja uh riley cleo you can hear this happening i imagine but Riley, as you go to open up this wet-soaked bag, 
that I said had the number four on it in Roman numerals. Open it up. You'd have to get closer to find out what's in it, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I step forward. How close are you getting? It was nice Until I see what's going you. on. You I mean, get... I'm not going to put my face right in front of it, but I'm going to walk <laughs> forward. Yeah. yeah. Like, Did yeah. you say you wanted to go crazy, Riley? Yeah. I mean, gosh. I'm I'm totally. I mean, come on. I am very very curious on what this is. This seems like a science experiment based on the animals pinned to the wall and <laughs> everything like this. I like this. Looks like a, a science room. I'm I'm totally cool with this. You go. You take a look at it. Feels like dirt. If you stick your hand in there, pull it out. It's this muddy black soot looking stuff. Uh that's it. Just looks like some soot. Yeah, it just looks like some muddy black silt soot. Um there are five other hooks on there if you want to try. There's also the rest of the room. There's the rings under the cloths, the various gemstones, the journals, books, and letters. Um, and we're probably tw- 10 to 20 minutes you've been in the house at this point. Okay. Not the entire house in this particular room. It's three o'clock in the morning. Time oh, is God. Exploring and looking. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to pocket the letters from the accounting book. And actually, what else? You said I found another thing. Uh, you found um, there is the kind of. Handwritten, oh, the handwritten books from the families, the diaries, mm-hmm. the diary of Lawrence Walby. Four of those in particular. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, those seem cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pocket as many as I can fit in my bag. Well, not as actually. That that's probably not not too fair. Um, I'm gonna pocket the accounting book. I'm gonna pocket any of the books that look similar to Aldous or. Um, not Aldis Ben, but uh, the other guy, uh, Lawrence Walby. Lawrence. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to look for Lawrence Walby stuff, and then I'm going to <laughs> also keep those letters. And then when I'm done with that, that's when I'm going to go to the library. I'm okay. Go to the next room. We're talking about a stack of letters about yay big. All oh, that up. that big? A lot of letters stacked up. They're individually wrapped about uh, five or six different stacks. Oh, this big of a stack. I can still fit that in my pack, though, right? That might be too much, along with your books that you already have and your other supplies. It'd be a stack of letters about this thick each. If I were but to... a total stack of about yay big. So you could probably get two stacks along with your accounting book, which is a fairly large book. Um, you um, know what? I'm just going to grab... Are, are, is the stack in like chronological order? Like the first ones at the bottom and the most recent ones at the top? If you take the time to look, they're organized by location. By location? Oh, by is there location. any location uh, relating to Farzeen? There's no location related to Farzeen. Mm. What are the some of the other locations then? You have uh, a rule Catan city. You have, let's see here. You have Ostrua, another continent next to our rule Catan. These are essentially the continents. Uh, you have the underground, uh, the under tunnels of Matrolk. You have Uskin, which is the bordering nation. Okay. You're kind of on a very small fiefdom area. Uskin would be to your, if you were to look at a map from where you are, there's a nation to your upper left. That would be Uskin, known for its halflings and giants. Then you would have uh, Shavesk, which would be your upper right. That is known for uh, timber, lumber, that kind of stuff. Uh, you do have Jopet. Let's see. Did you just say Joe Pesci? Joe Pet. Oh. Pet. <laughs> Pet. And then at the end of she. All of the drow, drow there actually look like Joe Pesci. It's this strange <laughs> thing. That would be amazing. Okay. Um, yeah. Am I saying something funny to you? 
Cool. I mean, I guess like yes. none, of, none of these really stand out or stick out to me except for a Rue Catan since that's where we came from. Sure. So I guess I'll just pocket their Rue Catan stack. Okay. And then then I'll go to the, lot, the um, library. Okay. Head in there. You see Bran tossing books feverishly on the ground. Bran, you're not going to find anything as far as this fish creature is concerned. As Cleo. I... Oh, oh go ahead. No, yeah, go ahead. Let me get around the table here. Cleo, um, you saw Riley open up, pull out this black soot, put it away, leave it alone. What else would you like to do? Uh, the animals on the wall, because I guess they see them. Mm -hmm. What are they? Exactly. Pinned to the wall, similar to what, uh, an, not an etymologist, is that right? No, but like what, what, like colors and creatures, like types, like anything. You see butterfly, beetles, rats, a monkey. There's several oh, birds, wren, eagle. A seagull, uh, and there's even a dog and a cat, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's a cute, adorable little dog. Looks like it just had surgery hair. So they're like Down normal here. animals, like, quoting this normality. Um, Roll a perception or investigation check. Right. Entomology! Yeah! I was close. <laughs> yeah, etymolo er, etymology, etymology is the study, is of, study words. of words. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's true. Sorry, what check? Uh, either investigation or perception, you can choose at this point. Or nature, I suppose. Is this still nature would here? probably give you the most information. Oh, well, I did 19 on perception. 19, yeah, that's good. Each of these creatures pinned to the wall uh, from the massive eagle all the way down to the itty bitty butterfly have scales large eyes in the uh, butterfly and the beetles. I think it's just the butterfly that have the compound eyes. The eyes itself have swollen larger and each of the compound eyes are these much larger what would be a single butterfly's eye, but each of the compound eyes are about that size. Scales. How big is it? Hmm? How big is it? Yeah, it's a Can six I take inches. it off the wall? You can unpin it, sure. Okay. Yeah, it's dried, um, taxidermied in some fashion, shellacked over. I don't know how entomologists do it necessarily. I'm gonna like take it off and fasten it on myself, like a pin. Sure. And as we do that, your turn to make a dread roll. Give me a wisdom save, please. As you what? see these various creatures. With some uh, touched with the brine, how the Innsmouth look about them? A wisdom roll? Mm -hmm. Question by general. Man, this like app is so weird. That is friggin' creepy. Ooh. What was that? Ooh, 11? You're good. Okay. Yeah. This is really weird, but I mean, you've seen pretty strange stuff here. I mean, there was an octopus coming out of a puddle at some point. Mm -hmm. But you take the butterfly off, you pin it to your hair or your shirt. I don't know <laughs> what. And I'm like, guys, does this like really make my outfit look so good? It like draws my eyes out, right? Like so pretty. You're creepy, Cleo. What? No one in the party <laughs> responded. They all just looked down. Um. I think we're all another. I'm writing. Yeah. I'm not there. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm oh, not, not there. there well, if you went yeah. up to get and the little wasn't... boy, you would be back up there. Oh yeah. Well, she could but... talk to you if she wanted to. Oh well, I didn't. Wasn't sure if I had entered the room yet. <laughs> so do you? Actually, no. I was picking up the um, the stones. Well, yeah, I was picking up the stones and putting on the satchel. Yeah, you're satchel. in the library with the kid. Yeah. I so, guess I'm uh... gonna find you guys to show off my new butterfly. <laughs> It matches my eyes. It's so beautiful. I will, right. I'll actually I will actually bring Dale if he's willing to go with me up to the up, up uh, wherever everyone else is. You do yeah. so. And I have the set, and I'll have the I'll take the satchel, obviously. 
Um, mm -hmm. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I hate love when the GM rolls dice. What? What's up? Hey, every. Um, well, we're we're gonna be taking uh, the the boy with us. His name is Dale. His he basically took the. Um, I suppose I should make an inside check. Actually, you know, what? I'm gonna make an inside check just to make sure. Because that would be the smart thing to do. Oh point. come on! Now, oh Jesus, Nat twenty for twenty four. Is he was he being straight with me? I mean, you would gather that whatever he saw out the window scared him shitless. So and but but the whole thing about his dead parents and it just it wasn't a line it was the truth right? You would assume so. For the twenty four, I would. Yeah. I'm gonna I mean, assume like that I said, it is. this kid was scared shitless. Yeah. At points in that time. Either people will tell you the truth or they'll tell you what you want to hear. What you wanted to hear was the truth, so you may infer that he was probably telling you the truth. All right, so I will say his his parents are, well, he's an orphan. <laughs> with, no, I'm sorry. I want to tell them your story. Pulls your cloak. <clears throat> oh, there you go. And I'll put a comforting hand around him. And I'm like, we're going to take him with us. He basically stole the bag to try to sell it here. Oh, that means actually whoever the owner of this place is, is probably coming back if you expected to find him here. Um, so we probably don't want to stay too long. Um, but we're going to take him with us. At least to the end, and it'll be up to the captain because he really wants out of this awful place. It is awful, right? I looked down at him. Dale. Yeah. That was for the audio listeners. He was shaking his head, yes. <laughs> Bran, you're tearing through books. You're not finding anything. How's it going down there? With mounting frustration, Bran finally gets. A little too too frustrated. He throws down the last book and then begins storming back up to the study and just announces we should leave now. And just starts heading back out the way he came. And he's actually gonna head down the stairs to just blatantly through the front door. Wow. All right. Uh, at this point, Riley, Cleo, Anja, he's storming out. If you wanted to grab anything else in the room at this point, let me know. This is also Riley. probably the first time you ever heard so much emotion in his voice. I'll say, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I will. Are you ready to go, Dale? I don't think we oh, should yeah, I seem to be Dale. faster now, too. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Riley? I, I don't think we should be taking a thief with us. Well, I'm going to. He's got nowhere else to go. Unless he can cook really well. The captain will decide whether or not he comes on the ship with us. He's actually I, an excellent navigator. You see that he has a little <laughs> spy class and... Oh, my God. And the astrolab right in his pocket. For some All right. Reason. Well, then, that's fine if I can learn <laughs> from him. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was just saying maybe it's not wise to take him with us, but I guess I don't fine. necessarily think. Well, keep in mind the ship is the ship. I don't at question is the ship going to stay at the uh, Farzine or is it going back until we sell this loot? Out? Like, uh, supposed to unload and uh continue picking up. No, cargo? I oh, I mean, I meant it for when we get to our you know Farzine, get to the island because if the boat is going to go back to the mainland, then the the then Dale could go with them and not necessarily go to this, you know, relatively this this island. No, um, the Hazel Follies not supposed to stay at Farzine. Generally, All right. so a he boat can... doesn't stay in one location for the rest of its life. It then wants to sail around and continue. Right, working. so they can. They it's a, that's why I mean it's going to be up to the captain because I think you know, captain he doesn't necessarily have to stay with us to, on the island. But at least we'll get out of this town. You'll probably be staying with us on this island. I have a feeling. 
That would be mad. That'd be he mitigator. might not even Man. make it to the island. You never <laughs> yeah. know. That's true. Just it's like Jeremiah. Yeah, oh, I might not make. We might not make it to the island either. You don't have to be the we fastest might, runner, just not the slowest. We might. We That's might what be. This kid is now. Swimmer. We might, be, Swimmer. We might have to Swimmer. make a detour. And he outran to you. So think about that. Oh yeah, he did. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I was keeping pace with him. I just missed <laughs> with my Eldritch Blast. <laughs> We might have to. We might. We might not make it to the island. We might be making a stop at. We might have to stop at an insane asylum. You know the way things are going. Yeah, I mean, so what? Riley, Cleo, and Anja are in the library, and Bran just stormed out. He just stormed the front out. Door. Just storming out. Freaking out. Okay. Um, I'm all set to go. Uh, cool, cool. Yeah. Then I guess I'll follow, but as I go through the study, I'm going to swipe some of those gems because I realize that they may be related to the science experiments. Yes, you can grab some gems. Rand, wait up. We're coming. Rand doesn't slow down. Wait up. It'd be stupid to go out there by yourself. Throw a book at him. <laughs> I'm probably already more, gone at this rate. Grab. I'm now faster than I have been. <laughs> oh, Seeing right. this thing made me Fucking faster, monks. apparently. <laughs> Fucking monks. <laughs> yeah, but I yell pretty loud. Uh, so you're busting out through the front door? Of yes. The... Yeah. You'll well, go that... running down the halls. You'll pass a parlor, an armory, and out the door you go. Yeah, because the door is now unboarded because I Eldridge blasted it before we decided to take the second floor. That's right. Yeah. Gosh. Don't make me. I could have just kicked it down. <laughs> Whoever is coming home is not going to be happy. We okay. didn't really leave the place a mess. It already was. No, the we, library no, is just... a mess. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's right. No, I just looted half right. of it. You were throwing <laughs> books around. Honestly, you guys didn't loot that much. I'm surprised. But since you guys are all leaving now, I'll go ahead and tell you all the good loot you missed. Oh, shut <laughs> up. I don't want to know. <laughs> hey, I'm not forcing them to come. I'm just, I, I'm just gone. Yeah, yeah. No, you managed to grab some of the gems out there. You grabbed the butterfly. I have noted down that you took down the letters from a rule katan. Yeah. You have the journal slash accounting book. Mm -hmm. And then all of the, the diaries of uh, Lawrence Walby. And the diaries of the Walby family. Walby family. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Ron just stops to check out the armory. You can do that if you want. Uh, wait. Brand stops all... at the armory? No, by an armory. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I would mean, assume it's more like a showroom or something that exactly. at somebody's house. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys want to do? Well, I mean, I'm I'm Head back. It's somewhat close behind Bran, I think. Okay. I'm uh... moving at forty. <laughs> oh shit! I'm not slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only moved. You 30. see, as Bran passes by the pony from earlier. Oh, that poor pony! <laughs> <He's> <laughs> completely there, lost. Uh, no, it's actually in the arms of a giant octopus, waving it around back and forth. Oh, <laughs> Bran doesn't care though. <laughs> That's right. not what happens, but yes. I've got a kid, anyways, with me, so I'm I I'm gonna just. Walk back to the inn. Yep. If you go walk back and you're it's... being cautious, avoiding puddles here and there, you should be fine. Yeah. If you want to roll a perception check on no! the way back. No, I don't. I don't because it'll be a freaking All right, fine. I'll do uh, it yeah, I don't want to be blind. <laughs> uh, that's a three plus. Remember, Kyle, they have passive perception. Just use that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a seven. The secret is I'm using their passive perception, but I love it when they stress out like this. <laughs> well, I remember how it went going the other way. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're fine. Uh, there is some point where you have to cross a, a rather large puddle. It's kind of the only way to get across. <laughs> and as you go to step across... Dale just steps his foot into the puddle and keeps walking. 
Okay. Yeah. I just go no, in. That's nothing. Yeah, you're fine. Riley, you're fine as you end up heading. Do back. I see Dale do that? Yeah. I'm. I'm not. I'm not keeping <laughs> leaving my eyes. I'm, I'm not taking my eyes off that kid. That's suspicious <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> those puddles, I, mean, I know what's wrong with those puddles. And that kid has lived in this town for how long? His entire life? And he just steps in those puddles? That fucker knows something. <laughs> he knows the monsters are all asleep at this hour. 3 fucking a.m. As Riley walks over the puddle, if he had bothered to look down, he would have noticed that it's just actually a simple puddle. You can see the bottom of it if you look hard enough. Oh, no, I'm staring at this kid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you're staring at this kid. You don't know. <laughs> that kid is a monster for sure. And oh, Cle- yeah. A monster for sure. For monster for sure, yeah. Um, Leo. Oh, go ahead. Uh, this, I don't know how far ahead I'm going to get to them, or ahead of them, obviously, but... Uh, as Bran walks, he'll end up cooling down a bit, mm-hmm. and then his mind will turn to the injured individual that we left and start thinking about where is he, where is he, is he still out there? And as he gets close to the end, he's going to look around, but kind of assume they went into the inn. But that would be correct. Um, Jeremiah is currently uh, sitting outside of the inn uh, with a blanket over top of him. Oh. It's a wet wool blanket. So. Seriously, that captain didn't friggin' bring him in. No. <laughs> Fine, I grab him on the way by. You can grab him on the way by. Bran, uh, yes, the dwarf is in the <laughs> inn, uh, plopped on top of a table. There are two watchmen there asking about what happened. Uh, as Captain Kenza is explaining to it, there is uh, the halfling owner of the inn is taking a look at the dead dwarf. But, yeah, if you want to go in, ask some questions, you can do that. Uh, the three join you shortly after. We'll head in and... <sighs> uncharacteristically actually kind of move towards the body mm-hmm. without really permission to examine him medically. Yeah, there is some pause. The watchmen look up. They see you enter in. I literally put down my medical pack, start yeah. opening up, just like I'm working, like almost ignoring everybody else. No, despite being in another country, The raven mask is a telltale sign that, oh, this is one of the medical priests. And they kind of let you do your thing. Weird and mysterious ways and mutter to the raven queen. But, yeah, what would you like to do? Uh, Basically identify cause of death. Roll medicine check. As you're doing this, the three of them enter in. Oh, nat 20 with a 26. Uh, the dwarf... With your newfound chi, and as you check over the body, checking his chi, you notice that there was some unbalancing... You could probably tell that there's been some unbalancing for a long time. I mean, for monks, you would see this kind of perfect alignment as they begin to know themselves. Normal people are a little bit wavier. The dwarfs is completely shattered. And one cheese spot that you noticed is just kind of missing. Humors are out of balance. The dwarf died of a heart attack. Fright most likely. Putting two to two together, you might surmise that the dwarf, being paranoid that he had been followed, and Captain Kenza will collaborate the story as you think about this. They were talking. The thief, Dale, came by, ran and grabbed the satchel at the end of their conversation when it was being handed off. 
the dwarf clutched his chest and collapsed on the ground. You had the chance to save him with a nat 20. You can... You might have been able to save him had you actually taken the time to help him. His death is on your head. Shut up, Kyle. No, oh, no, 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 no. He's right. And this it is true. what he thinks. He'll, after he's done, he'll slowly put away his medical equipment. And as everyone walks in, he'll kind of look at everyone's. This dwarf died of natural causes. <sighs> And it was then you're saying it was his time? No. Not his time. Just of natural causes. His psyche could not handle the paranoia that was driving him. His body was unbalanced, and his physical form could not sustain the stress that he was constantly under. Wait, he died of stress? Yes. Fear. Try his heart could not take it. If I had stayed, I might have been able to save him. I shouldn't have gone after the child. I should have done what I was supposed to do first. We didn't know that was what you were supposed to so, do. So, uh, Captain yes, Kenza, is, on yes, to retrieve the know. stones, by the way. <laughs> I, I... Thank you, Anja. And, Bran, there was nothing. He was dead as soon as he hit the ground. I'm sure of it. You can't blame yourself for this. But I see you got the criminal... As she stares at Dale. Yep. This is him. In air quotes. He the is... thief that killed the dwarf. He did not kill the dwarf. He did not kill the dwarf. Watchman, this is the man who stole from us if you wish no, to arrest him. No, don't arrest him. He, he's an orphan. Oh? He was stealing it to try to get enough money to get out of this awful, awful town. At which point Sorry. the tavern keeper and the guards are just incredibly let, let offended. Them be. It is an awful, awful town. <laughs> I get bit by a friggin' tentacle thing in one of your potholes. Oh, Steve. Yes, you have to watch out for Steve. Stay away from the potholes. Uh, it could have oh been Stavetta, too. Stavetta. So. It's Stavetta. Oh, you know about yeah, Stefetta as well? No, not here. I, I know about the one at home. Don't forget Stanley. No, it's Steve on this on this uh, it's Steve on this podcast. Stanley lives outside the walls. So, um he has nothing. Um he was very very scared when we caught up to him. Because there was a monster apparently that went back out into the ocean. Bran saw it. Uh, I don't think the rest of us did. And, and this boy, Dale, saw it. And he was so scared. And I, I could tell he was telling the truth to me. That's literally all he wanted this for. He's desperate. So. He saw a monster and he stole in order to get out of this yeah, town. Well, he saw he saw the monster after he stole the bag. But he dropped the bag. And he came to me. I would... I know this is a weird request, considering. But here, the bag is right here, and I'll, I'll hand it to her. It's all there. She opens, Maybe checks it out. Maybe we take him with us. I don't think he's a bad kid. I think he's just a desperate kid. Do me a favor. Roll a Yeah, because I'm so good at me. this. Persuasion, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, fucking hell. That's only a three. Fuck. Burn the kid. Make him in the jerky. <laughs> so oh, you got a little murder hobo on your face. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so who said that? She grabs Anja. She grabs oh. you by the elbow, takes you over to the not oh, gradually, okay. gently. Two ladies about to talk to a child, not wanting to talk in front of the child. We're talking about the child, okay? Yeah. We're talking about the child. Yes. There is no room for any more people on this boat. We have a packed cargo hold. Every single space is full. And we even have more people than I was originally expecting. I cannot take this child with us. There's no possible way, huh? Unless you would like to stay here in his stead. Aunt, you know that. I do. Uh, that's as serious as this situation is. What's if I... And she glances wait, 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 up wait, what... to Riley and back to the conversation. Wait, um, well, I mean, I could give him my bunk and I could take the floor. If you have to, I will pay you. I will pay you to take this child with us. You obviously, he obviously is desperate. We've been attacked at sea. That's just true. The ship is not safe, nor are my crew safe if we have another body on board this ship. Okay. All I could do was ask. If you have some funds to give him, it sounds like he needs some money. Perhaps you can give him some, but he cannot leave, and he will not leave on board my ship. Fair enough. There's too much at stake. What is at stake? my livelihood and my boat if i don't make money on this trip i don't have a boat anymore where the kids future be yet a brand you had uh three fingers in the air i'm gonna yeah i just have a quick question yeah you said that this isn't an island that we are technically part of the mainland right yeah are there other ways aside from boats uh, out of this area? Yeah, you could take the road. Uh, road continues past the end, past the wall. If you go north far enough, you'll end up in the um, kind of feudal uh, lands of this small, tiny nation. Uh, past that, you can go over to Uskin or uh, Shabesk. I will kind of look up. This child did a crime, but he is a child. Desperation breeds this breeds unfathomable choices. He didn't harm this dwarf. This dwarf was going to die anyways. I would hate to see another life extinguished early. There are other ways out of this town. If you're so desperate, see that he has some funds, have him go more into the mainland. Unfortunately, he will have to fend for himself, just like so many other people do. I assume you're not talking to Captain Kenzo, but I'm talking like in general. Okay. This is also towards like the guards, because obviously they would be arresting him and such. Mm-hmm. I just see you talking to like a like a post or something. Yeah, no, I'm looking like completely <laughs> in a different direction from everybody else. Bran, you're you're facing a wood pole. <laughs> nope, a little more to the right. <laughs> Are you sure you put your mask on right this morning? He's looking out through the ear hole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're actually talking directly to him. Your mask is just pointed in a different direction. <laughs> it really unnerves it out. people. Yeah. <laughs> and it must have been really funny when I was examining him. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Um, so be it. No, I'll do it. I'll see what I got for funds here. What is what is enough? What what would be a decent amount to give him to get him out of town? I'm not even positive on that. Anja uh, would if know. anyone wants to help out, but Anja, you can make a history check for me. Jesus Christ, I can't even see it. Oh God, that's a five plus. Fucking dice. Uh, six. Yeah, no. The only way to get out of here would be on land. You'd probably have to pay someone who's also leaving. And there's no hot air balloons or blimps. Roll a history check. Or if you can remember a few things that I said earlier last session. Oh, shit. Uh, Riley, you you would probably be good at that. Was... You want to help these people with this poor orphan? Wait, are you talking about the gnome airships, or are you? What are you talking about? Yeah, there was something like that, wasn't there? there? Gnomes are are supposedly building airships, but no one's seen any proof of that. Cleo, uh, yeah, with 11 and you're a well-to-do family, you know that there's the messenger service of Uskin, the Wren Riders, halflings who ride giant birds. Ah, And that they have been known on occasion to take passengers who are small enough for 25 gold. We'd have to, like, get one of them to come. That right? would be the thing. You are not far from Uskin, where they originate, and there is going to be a Ren Rider roost nearby, but whether it's occupied at the moment or not, you... Ah, shit. I rolled my check to see dice on the ground here. All right. Um, You'd have to see if it's occupied or not. Okay. Like, if someone's sitting there? Yeah. Okay. Wait, is there a post in town? I tell Anja this, like, hey, there's a... You could try the Ren Riders. Yeah. (laughs) Oh. Is that what they do in World of Warcraft, right? I'm pretty sure it's the game I'm thinking of. Like, find a little bird. It's another land. Those are griffins. Yeah, they're and griffins. <laughs> you're okay, close. Yeah, you're, right? you're still, and then you're still close. Hundreds of flying mounts. <laughs> and the other hundreds. thousands of flying mounts. Yeah, there may be a thousand in the game now. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'll be like, and it's how much is it to, to for them to take a passenger, Cleo? Because I apparently don't know these things. <laughs> Ms. Cleo, you're Typing up by uh twenty five gold. Oh, twenty five. Uh, oh, okay. Just Unless so everyone knows, uh, Caitlin is a nerd who plays WoW, but only a long time ago. She prefers the original Ooh, vanilla WoW. I only I nerd. Did. That's why I picked up WoW Classic for like three months and then put it back oh, down. There you go, Caitlin. There's WoW Classic for three months. You can get. No, no, I mean, there's not a three-month package. That's just how long I played before. I'm like, fuck this. I'm done. That's how I felt. I was like, why do I want to play something where I have to get all these stupid things added on just to find stuff? Like, this is ridiculous. Try Stardew Valley instead. Anyway. I currently play. I am. Yeah, wow, now we're insulting we DJ and Carol. Yeah, yeah. Guys, See if I admit it, there is a all. rift on this podcast. <laughs> on this show and I, I don't can't need nine million my... add-ons either. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's get back to this game and this reality. Okay. Uh, That's insulting, Cleo. <laughs> so wait, is there so is there Ren Rider in this town? Actually, I wouldn't know. So if you ask that out loud, I will ask the that tavern out loud keeper. at the tavern keeper. Is there yeah, Ren Rider? There's in generally this town? a Ren Rider in every town, even a town this small. It's questionable whether he's here or not, though. You're looking for Tim Toff O'Keeley. Uh, where I'm going to write down it? that name before I forget. <laughs> Tim Toff O'Keeley. Tim Toff. Toffle. Toffle. Oh. Toffle O'Keeley. All right. If you had a uh, NPC forever now. <laughs> yeah, Tim Toffle O'Keeley. Tim Toffle O'Keeley. All right. He's that was actually written down, just so you know. 
Uh, it's written down here too. <laughs> good. There you go. Well, I'm not going to change it. I would never change it. I wrote it a while ago. <laughs> Why the tavern I owner so points lies. the opposite way that um that you guys had started following um Dale when you had been running and towards the middle of town there is a large post where a wren giant wren could find a place to stop for a while and that would be the wren rider outpost here in Rizonte. What's the, what's the name is Timmy what? Tim Toffel O'Keeley. What a name. E T O K or O C. T I M T O F F L E. O Q U. You spell it however you want, but I'm not. L L M N O P. Yeah. And then there's a P at that, and it's silent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. The watchmen go. They take the body of Vin Cordo, the dwarf. And if you want to double check your notes, yes, his name was Vin Cordo. And they take him away. Do you? I will look at the tavern keeper and they're like, um, hmm. I was going to take a Jeremiah in my room because somebody won't take him in hers. But I think I need to keep Tim, Tim Dale close to me. Um, so uh, do you have another spare room that uh, we could put uh, this gentleman in for the rest of the night? What, Jeremiah? Trump? Yeah. I'm not gonna really have room in my room. Uh, I'm I, I'm gonna keep uh, Dale with me. Wait, was it, he not staying uh, with Cleo? Cleo hey, wouldn't Julie take him. Was... Yeah. You well, said you weren't you... going oh, to yeah, take him. Oh yeah, because he he went down to the other place, the, uh, the 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 cauldron. the this cauldron, mm -hmm. instead of this place. Dag on it. You're at the Dag on it with We're Obed, Dagon. Marsh, and Nora. Uh, and you ask Obed, and Obed will point you to the drunk corner where there are oh, a couple okay. of colts, uh, cots that fold out of the walls. It did look like a picture, <laughs> a mural on the wall, but if you pull hard enough, a cot actually pulls out, and there is a bucket, several buckets on the ground, and there are two other drunk. You know I went to this place in Arizona, and they, they built the house. It's really bizarre because it's like, like upcycled materials. And they had a entertaining room with like a bar. And I kid you not, built into the wall, which is like a, a rock type of thing, cement. It's like one bed, and it bumps up a bit and another bed. And it was for the drunk guests. Oh see. my god, so it really <laughs> exists. Yes. yes. Holy really mackerel, really I've never seen this. Feeling. I I was like, why, would you, why would you? Kyle oh was like, my I god, feel it's brilliant! <laughs> yeah. no idea. So, fine, we will give him one. I'm of the insulted drink. that you believe that that's just some made up thing. <laughs> I thought oh, it was a really so cool, cool idea. I mean, yeah. I, I was would all make like, up I've used shit it like that. <laughs> <Yeah. I> would... <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. So, yeah, so we'll go I'll open up another bed and put Jeremiah on it. And I will, yep. I will take Dale with There's me. There's the nice stone cold portion of the wall there. Because it's made out of wood, and there's some freshness. Yeah. There's some furs on it, too. And then there's the ice-cold wall, and Jeremiah just right up against the ice-cold wall. Mm. All right. And then I, it's like 3 fucking o'clock in the morning, and I'm going to bed. Yeah, it's uh, 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, it's so. 4 fucking o'clock in the morning. I'm you guys spent some time out there. And I will take, I said, I'll take Dale with me. Is there... What is it? One bed in the room? I'll give him the bed. I could take the floor. Sure. Do the rest of you all go to bed at this point? Or Yeah. Yeah. Brand doesn't. I want to leave in the morning. It'll Brand? be like noon at this point. No, nah, it's first thing in the morning. That's how <laughs> it's going to be here. We're going to miss this ship. I, no. will, I will kind of like stop the captain before Brand. as everyone kind of heads to bed. Can I help you? The stones. How important are they? Stones? They're Wilcomite. 
they're really only useful to whoever wants them, really. Where did they come How from? Do you spell Wilkemite? Uh, Wilkemite is, uh, I do believe it's an actual mineral if you want to Google it. W I L K A M I T E. It's a greenish soapstone like rock mineral. And Jill, I honestly don't know. The buyers set up the meeting. The, the dwarf and I were supposed to meet here, Vin. Supposedly got it from some area outside of town. There's already been one death over these stones. There's clearly much more going on in this town than anybody, or at least any of us, was aware of. I just hope it's worth it. Bran, I trust your insight, but to be fair, we've killed several pirates now over marble and wood. Defending yourself is one thing. This was needless. Anyways. Tell me, you've been at the sea a long time. What's the most horrific thing you've seen come out of the water? <laughs> she gives you this strange look, but of course, with your mask, you're impenetrable at this point. <laughs> the, the giant squids are possibly the strangest things I've seen. There's been giant crabs attacking once upon a time, but mm, there's been rumors of fishmen, but they're only that rumors from drunk sailors. Never heard of sea giants. Have you ever heard of them? No, honestly. I hear they're these storm storm giants, but they don't actually live in this area. They live in the sea beyond. It's supposed to be 50 foot tall, I hear. <laughs> uh, at a game where I saw this entity. Was it near the dock or someplace else? Fen Manor uh, has the back. There's a gazebo out back there to look out on the water. Some might think it's a mimic, but don't worry about that. And it was standing. Uh, there's a small cliff. Like you could literally jump out into the bay, into the water from the backyard from a, like, say, 10 feet away from this gazebo. 30 feet away from the actual manor itself. So it was like the opposite side of the area then? Uh, yes, I'm just trying I'm... to picture where it came out of the water, like in relation to where our ship is docked and oh. where the town is and stuff. Yeah, uh, imagine uh, a horseshoe upside down. Your ship is on really the far end of it, and the monster was about here on that horseshoe, right? Okay, so there. the other side. Yes. Okay. And less. there's like no... It, it, did we ever see any civilization or structures over that end? The end that you're on? No, the end that I spotted the entity. Those would be the rich manor houses. If you had kept going up the road, you would have gotten to the top of the cliff where the uh, Temple of Dagon is. Okay. I'm actually going to step outside and just look up at the temple. Mm -hmm. Do we see any? Do I see any type of light coming from it? Roll a perception check. Eleven. Nope, no light coming from it. Seems like a quiet, abandoned town at this point. There are some lights. Uh, closer to the water, um, down the street, because it's kind of down a hill as you get closer to the water. You could see where the cauldron is, and even that tavern looks to be closed down at this point. You might see the beginning of 
sunrise, but that's fairly far off. It's it's the darkest point of the night, you know. Bryn will stay outside and watch the coastline again and just simply pray to the Raven Queen for the safe passage of the dwarf's soul and our own safe passage across the water. And I will suck up at a point of exhaustion because Bran does not feel like sleeping. All right. Sounds good. Anja. Yeah. Roll a d6 for me, please. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I didn't really want to sleep either, by the way, but three. Three? Yeah. You're able to fall asleep, whether you want to or not. Just too tired. And you just, again, you're dreaming of this city in some far off land with strange worlds in the building. You find the guard captain of this city comes to you, tells you to put on your guard outfit, and you go put it on, and you walk through the strange city behind your captain as more guardsmen follow up behind him, and you climb up the walls of this great city. Strange green stone like jade. Like the jade you found earlier tonight. And Hmm. as you get to the top of the wall, out 300 yards, a mass of creatures lay siege to the city you're in. And you hear a horn call. And you wake up the next morning. That is Riley, Cleo, and Anja. Wake up feeling refreshed. Bran, being outside. You are the first to see as Mundo Fen approaches the inn. Morning. Where's your captain at? Inside. Most likely sleeping still. She had a late night. All of us did. Oh. That's a shame. Well, you want to give her a message? What's the message? Fortunately, we don't have the right material to fix the ship. And it's going to be another day and for it to get fixed. But I'm sorry. I promised I'm the harbor master of the town, obviously. And and I promised that it would get done, but it can't be done tonight. So uh, it, I'll spot you some rooms down at the Cauldron Inn, if you like. All right. Well, now, that's the message. Good luck to you. Quick question. Uh, yeah. Mundo. Mundo. Does this appear to be the from the Finn family? Of the Fen family, yes. Mundo Fen. He's the harbor master you met earlier in town, and he is the portrait you saw earlier at Fen Manor. Anybody else around? There is one other person behind Mundo Fen, and they're just kind of struggling to give you a smile as you look at them with big, wide mouth and wide, watery eyes. So and he like... just corroborates the story. So this is the one who would have owned that house. But he was not home. Mm-hmm. Clearly they didn't finish the work. what he says what does the other one behind him look like taller lankier 
he also has kind of an odd walk to him. The large, watery eyes. He's got a touch of the brine about him. The Innsmouth look. They look tired. Give me an insight check. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yeah, you would say they look tired. Uh, Mundo is dripping wet, and looks like the walk up here. I mean, both of them walk with a strange gait, and the walk up away from the water and uphill towards the Dagonet Inn. And I say hill; it's slight incline. It's not too bad. But that walk seems to have worn him out. But it looks like Mundo was swimming in the water at some point, anyway. And as he turns and asks, like maybe takes three steps away, I then just state, "I guess the damage was much more than we expected. You clearly were working all night, looking all tired, and being in the water so much." Well, we try to make the best fixes we can, and. We tried our best using alternative material, but you know how it is. When you don't have the way to fix something right, it, it just doesn't get fixed right, you know? We we pride ourselves on making sure a ship gets repaired right around I'd like here. to insight check how truthful he's being about working late. Do you want to roll the 22 over, or do you want to... If I can, roll, if I can have it roll over into that, that's great, but yeah, it's up it to you as the GI. That. Oh, yeah, no, that's up to you. If you had a low roll and you're like, yeah, I can roll a better insight, feel free to. With the 22, though, the first time you met Mundo, he was a grouch. Now that you meet Mundo, he seems forcibly trying to appear happy and sorry to not have been able to do the work for you. It's a kind of complete flip of character that you saw him from earlier and that's strange I let them go without further questioning or incident like I said go down to the cauldron ask for (laughs) Nallis Fink. She owns the bar. Nallis Fink. F E N K. I do believe we have already met her, actually. At least some of us. She's rough around the edges, but I already told her the arrangement and that I'm paying for the room, so she'll give you the rooms for you. And off he and his friend go. Breakfast is served at the Dagonet Inn. Blood sausage, uh, possibly made from the uh, sturge from yeah. last night, uh, as well as eggs about the size of an ostrich egg. So the yolk is about that big. Oh That's my about God. that. One of them would feed the entire table. Hey, Kyle. Oh, Mr. GM. Just a I go by both. So, uh, just a couple of questions for for funsies. Uh, I hate did those. did Dale know anything about me when I dreamed or anything? Because I don't know if anything weird happens or whatnot. You speak in tongue as you sleep. <laughs> yeah. Did I did I land somewhere like the original dream? Was, was I still sleeping where I was, or have Dale I? Dale didn't notice it. Damn, Damn right. thing. Okay, yep. Uh, did you I move? did wake up in a different place, but... Like, I, sorry, I took the floor, so probably a different location on the floor. Different location on the floor. You're actually closer to the window now. I don't know and if that means you're anything. also missing all your valuables, probably. No. <laughs> no, but all the blood that was in your body is... Uh, Somewhere else, as Dale hops out of bed with a giant full belly. Yeah, no, I'd be dead if that was the case. Undead. Didn't I so tell you? Not undead. <laughs> You're not dead.
That's nope. Vicky the Dead End. Woke up. Close. I will wait for people to come down and just kind of be sitting at the most reasonably sized chair in this bin, since I'm assuming <laughs> I get right. first pick. If necessary, I'll do the awkward, grab it from one place, scrape it across the ground, put it to another place. <laughs> All right. I'll come down. Riley, Cleo. Um. Yeah. We're not all down there yet. I figured you guys would be like, "All right, it's breakfast time." Yeah, I'll I'll go down. We went to bed at four a.m. Breakfast is let's see, is like noon. <laughs> Lunch time. I guess we don't actually have to worry about. Uh, I mean, we have I'm, to worry about leaving. I'm Elvish. I I sleep lightly. I'm half, actually, sleep. I'm half elvish, so... Half elvish, both of you are. Yeah, yeah, we're half both elves sleep eight hours. I sleep the eight hours, but... Elves don't sleep. When did the captain wake up? As you begin to dig into your breakfast, you see Nuki run in through the front door, go up the stairs, and five minutes later that, Nuki goes running down the stairs, out the window... And the captain window. comes down. Yeah. Cats don't like to go in through the same way they came out, obviously. <laughs> and I will uh, approach captain the Kenza captain as she comes down. down. Are you ready to set sail today? Nuki says all the repairs were made. Tip-top shape, too. Really? I haven't told anybody yet. Uh, I know. It seems that Mundo informed me as I was outside this morning, that the ship is not ready, that the repairs were not completed, and that he's already arranged us to have rooms at the cauldron for tonight. Nuki said that it was repaired last night before dark had even really fallen. But they, said um, they didn't have the right materials. Somebody's I'm lying. beginning to dislike this town. I'm right there with you. Why do you think the why do you think Dale wants to get the hell out of here? Maybe we should go walk by go check out the ship. And also yeah. I'll go check also we can check out the Ren Riders too. I can think we... checking out the ship would be good. And to be yeah. honest, even if you don't have the space. We might need to take that child. It may be truly unsafe here for him. Will we pass the run rider station on the way down to the docks? You can, yes. Okay. Uh, then I suggest that. And then, I don't disagree, but if he's not here... If he's not here, then we're just going to have to leave the kid. I'm afraid he's I mean, right. We don't have the room for it. I mean, it's not like we're on an island. The, the kid has plenty of options. And the kid has lived here by himself just fine for years. The kid, Dale himself, he is just shrinking into himself at the prospect. I kind of look at Riley. Riley, that seems extremely heartless. I didn't realize you were quite that way. Well, I mean, it just seemed logical. I didn't say it didn't seem logical. I said it seemed heartless. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but sure. Well, I'm so check be, the ship. I think we should check the ship. Why? Did you notice anything about him? I mean, why would he lie? I do not want to make speculation. Do you think he knows that we broke into his house? He has to, broke unless he house. hasn't gone to his ho home yet. I mean, is he... I kind of look at the captain. For your knowledge, it seems that we... Went into our repairman's house last night. That is where the thief house. ended up. I assume you left everything as it should have been? I look at Riley. It's <laughs> 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 so like packed like much heavier and much bulkier than yesterday. <laughs> I uh, go back to eating my food. <laughs> 
完了完了，这是。Um, we'll go down to the dock and speak to Mundo Fen. We can take a look at the ship as well. I actually don't、But、think it would be a good idea was... to speak with him. You broke into his house last night. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the fact that he would tell us the ship is not repaired, and that he's、yeah. setting us up on rooms in the cauldron in town. So he's、Do、not up like to, this. He's up to something. Sorry. <laughs> you know, and there's that temple on the hill. Where as did we know? I'm trying to remember. Did we know that people there were people at the temple last night? We saw no, we didn't. Moving in the distance, but that's about it. Yeah. We should go to the ship if it's repaired. I suggest we go. Is the I agree Ren, with Bran. Is the do anybody know if the Ren Riders is between here and the ship? Yeah, I already asked that. Right on the bike. Sorry. You, it is. It's、yes. like in the middle of town. Red Riders. Yeah. If you want to collect the rest of your shipmates who are staying at the cauldron, they're there, and then keep going up the loop or down the loop, and you can get down to your ship. Are we collecting everybody right now, or are we just going to check out the ship? Just checking out the ship. Yeah, I don't think we're collecting all the shipmates yet. Meow.、Yeah. Actually, I will go. If you want, I will go retrieve all the shipmates and bring them to the ship. No,、nah, there's no. Well, isn't the cauldron right by the docks? You can go to the Ren outpost, like a zigzag to your ship, without even going to. Oh,、uh, got it. So yeah, you would have to go back just a little bit out of the. Well, I, I say we all together just go to the Ren Rider, and then from the Ren Rider, that's where Bran can split off. To tell、care. the crew, and then we just head to the ship. I don't, but I don't, I don't think we want to necessarily bring all the crew there unless we're absolutely do, sure we can leave. Because if we need to leave in a hurry, I want everyone in one place. So doing this in parallel and all arriving at the ship around the same time, if the ship is good, is like perfect timing. If we have to flee in a hurry. If anybody asks, the captain's here, but everyone else is at the cauldron. They would not know that the ship isn't ready. It would make reasonable sense that they would head to the ship, unless Mundo Mundo、oh, was already、true. there because Mundo talked to the owner of the cauldron to get us room, so he was already there. Maybe he talked to the other crewmates. It could be. He was here early. I highly doubt anybody was up at that time. He was at the cauldron before he was here. He said he reserved us rooms, and he had already talked to the owner. The owner,、oh, yes, but I doubt、cauldron. any of the crew would have noticed. But either way, the point I'm trying to say is he admitted that he's already been at the cauldron, so there had been a、yes. chance that he talked to our crew. Yeah. So what's the plan, guys? Ren Riders. Yeah, I'll go to Ren Riders. Start with that first. Okay. You head over to the Ren Riders. And I will bring the kid with us. Sure. Past mossy strewn buildings, puddles on the ground. I avoid the puddles. Riley, as you pay attention. Oh yeah. Kid seems to know every puddle like the back of his hand. There's some that he's. Giving a wide berth to, and there's some that he's just walking through like it's nothing. I am going to mimic him. I, I'm going to avoid the same puddles he avoids, and、uh, follow. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. If anyone else does that, you guys actually move through this town a little bit faster than you normally would have. Cool. And you get to the Ren outpost pretty quickly. And someone give me a D twelve. Let's see if Tim Toffel O'Keeley is home. Yeah,、oh, D twelve. Oh, I rolled an eleven. Oh, never mind. One. Sorry, it was my friggin' I. Well, it was her idea, my idea. I was like, you know what? I, if if it burns, then I want to take the blame.、Uh, but it was eleven, so I rolled really well. Knock on the door, and open up. Shaggy-haired halfling, gigantic goggles on his face, covered actually down to his eyes.、Uh, he's got vines wrapped around him as clothes. Generally, hippy dude. Hello, what can I do for you this morning? Good morning. Uh, Why are you like, copying after my accent? What is the、I'm、matter not, with you? I am not. You make fun is... of everyone you encounter. This is very early in the morning. We just got in last night. Do you want a job or not? Are you paying? Absolutely. 
It's for this gentleman right here, and I point out Dale. He would like a ride. Do you, where do you want to go, Dale? Do you have any place in particular? Uh, no, just 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 out of here. Do you know a Excuse good place? Uh, my mother said that we had family in uh, in Chavesk. Can I don't you... I don't know where though. Well, at least it's a start and it's a location and it's better than this place. I'm sorry, did you want me to do a job or are you talking to yes. a little boy? I'm talking to a little boy about your job. I could he... go track to bed and get some nice shot eye. He is your client, even though I'm paying. So what's the name of the town? Chav Chavette? Chavesque. Chavesque. Chavesque is not a town. It's, it's a, a nation. Country. Oh, oh just, you don't... We're... You We're basically just what? sending a kid off into a place he has no idea about. Well, you didn't want to take him on the ship, so that's we can't the take him on the trip. ship. Well, you didn't want to take him on the ship anyway. Yeah, because so he's sketchy as it. fuck. Well, it's either that or we try to convince her to take him on the ship. No, I'm I'm a little less suspicious of him now that he avoids only some puddles and not others. I realize <laughs> that there's a little bit more to it. He just but I still town. don't trust him, but I'm less wary of him now. You want I, uh, me to take the child or a letter the child has? I want you to take the child. He wants to get out of here. How much? 25 gold? Will we have to see it? first if it's even possible. And he grabs Dale by the hand and jerks him into the building. Uh, bonks his head on the way in. Duck your head. And takes him in and you see there's a weighing station, a height station, and Halfling just starts taking measurements on this little vine, and there are thorns in it. So every <laughs> once in a while, the oh. he's like, "Stop moving!" Yeah. He is at the very edge of the limit. It'll have to be thirty gold. To where at, kid? He just shrugs his head and looks at you. I fish out thirty gold. Do you? Thank you. Now, here's a question. I've been a have... very nice DM lately. How much gold do you guys actually have? I, it says it, you? I have 200. You have 200 gold? How do you have 200, you 200 at 200 level gold? 2? I don't know. That's why I, I'm very well, curious. Hey, <laughs> nah. We got something somewhere. Right. Yeah, I, you know how much gold I have at level 2? 30. I, have four. I mean, it four says... <laughs> You're from one of the richer families. Uh, yeah. I wish there was a history. Cleo, well, how much gold do you have? I don't well, know. Nobody's. Honestly. I know I haven't spent. <laughs> have we spent so much? Oh, maybe. I thought we got. I, was, I guess I was thinking we get gold off the pirates, but I got somewhere because I put it in there. I. Some of you got gold off the pirates. Yeah. <laughs> I have yes. Why do I have so much gold? Uh, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to know where the closest uh, temple to the Raven Queen is. The closest temple to the Raven Queen in, is actually in... Week. It's at the far edge of Sask... Shavesk. In a town known as Liraport. I look at Dale, the child. Tell me, what is your view on religion? I generally don't don't care for it. The only people who actually worship anything around here just go up to that temple on the hill. I can most likely arrange a place for you at one of my sister temples. Oh, you will have to work there, and you will have to obey their rules, but they can shelter you. They can most likely assist you in finding work as you get older, or if you wish, you may even become one of their own flock. Yes, I'll, I'll take it, if you can get me out of here today. Very well, I will have to simply write a letter. As you write the letter... Tim Toffolo Keeley 
30 gold to the edge of Shavesk. All right, I look so, at the rest. I just shake my head. I have no money to help you. I will say I, I just I just basically reduced it to exactly thirty gold. To thirty, no, I reduced it to twenty. Well, I mean, I guess I could pay all my money. That'd be fair. That'll be flat. The price is thirty gold. This is only twenty. I don't know how well you can count. Perhaps you're too far up away from the gold itself, but uh, if you come closer, 20. You need 10 more. Anybody got any more gold? Are you a murder hobo party? Are you a good party? Apparently we're not, because apparently we didn't loot anything. I dropped the the four gold I have. This is literally all I have. You should probably work a little bit more if all you have is 24 gold among four of you. We got you are nothing. wasting my time. I am going back to bed. We literally got nothing off the pirates. No, I, I got 10 gold off the pirates. But you're not willing to help. Okay, I take my money back then. I No, I mean out of character, I'm telling you. I, I got money off the pirates. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 He's telling us out of character. And too. Captain Kenza puts down six gold pieces. There. Take him now. All right, let's go. And he goes, throws a pair of goggles at the kid, goes outside the building, starts climbing up. Get out of my shop. Lock the door behind you. And he goes, climbs up this thorny looking branch to where a gigantic bird is nibbling at this gigantic insect that it has impaled on a thorn as wrens do. And Shasha, it is time we are going. You you will have to finish me later. And he goes, hops on Sasha's back, flies down, Dale climbs on, and if you have any other final words you want to say, otherwise... Take care. Tim Toffolo Keefe. Stay out of trouble. I will. And off they fly into the distance. Cool. Until a tentacle reaches out, grabs them, and drags them. <laughs> down. And they're dead. dead. We and just wasted 30 gold. <laughs> Obviously, that doesn't happen. Come on. You didn't, that, that'll be a framework thing. thing. No, 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 no. You yeah. didn't waste anything because you didn't help. So. Right. Yeah, no. So the, I didn't <laughs> Right now, there's anything. only two of you with gold. Do you know how expensive books are? <laughs> 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 I don't know. You have gold, so you haven't bought any. I have this little gold because I have bought lots of books in my life. No, no, no. He just takes them. <laughs> well, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, really. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's that's really the deal. He doesn't buy anything. Yeah, when I'm in the home of an evil, you I'll know, be judgmental. I mean, we saw the evidence of his rapes in the other room. I didn't feel too bad stealing from this guy. Well, something is clearly up. Yeah, so I am I am totally cool with stealing from that dude. Now, the repository, you'll notice, I didn't take any book out of there. You did copy. I copied mm-hmm. and then left. Yeah, very kind of you. Actually waiting to see if it was raw because it wasn't locked. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the All last right. person in there? Where are you guys heading next? Ship. Uh, yeah. I will head to the cauldron while everyone else, I think, goes to the ship. Yep. Yeah. Split up the party. All right. You head down to the cauldron. You see. Oh, there we go. The uh, Wicot triplets, the dwarves, are all busy monk eating this more fish stew and drinks. I will. Ah, oh, Bren, what are you doing here? Finish within a minute. Um, we need to go to the ship and be prepared to leave. The ship's under repairs. Mundo Fen was in here I earlier. I kind of lean closer the... and say, this is the captain's orders. Captain's orders. And with that, they actually stop eating. Go. Uh, 
at a one of the dwarves finishes drink real quick runs out there as well Nalas Fenk is giving you a look as you walk out I will kind of look at her obviously with my mask Mm -hmm. and I'll just give a nod and I'll walk out Um, see you later tonight out, out of character weren't there more members of our crew there or was it just the three? Oh, yeah. Is, uh, what's his face with us? Uh, Chloe's bodyguard. Jeremiah. Cleo's bodyguard, Cleo. Yeah. Keep saying yeah, that. Yeah. Guys left him asleep. <laughs> we, we totally <sighs> forgot Jeremiah. Fuck. Yeah, I'm sure he would have woken up from all the food, right? Um, in the, in the, in the. He went, he was passed ever. out long before we were. I would have thought he would have been awake by now. All right. Someone else give me a D12. <laughs> oh, yeah. It won't be me this time. Cleo. Cleo. He's hey. your bodyguard. Yeah, he's your bodyguard. I mean, aren't you trying to ditch him though? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> even if you do notice, <laughs> just don't tell anyone. This is more like he follows us versus anything else. That's really how it is. <laughs> well, I'm assuming Cleo wants him to stay here, and we're seeing if he does or not. And since I rolled higher than she did, twelve. You see Jeremiah with his great sword dragon behind him, lifting up his breechers. <laughs> No. As you exit out the cauldron. Oh, Brand, there you are. <laughs> Obed said that you guys were headed down to the Just ship. come. I just actually grabbed him. It's like, just come. Oh, oh okay. No. And you guys make your way to the ship. I actually look at everyone says, and says, and just like, do they all have weapons on them? Uh, the dwarves. Uh, wow. They are. They have. Uh, they're visiting a town kind of weapon so a couple of them have some light hammers uh one of them actually even has a hook but they're kind of like as we're moving i just kind of in a lower voice to them all Mm -hmm. i do not want to know what's going in the on in this town but be prepared for trouble okay and Riley, Cleo, Anja, as you guys are making your way down the town, you are starting to get stares from people. Um, Big, watery insight. Stares. Insight. You can. I mean, I, I feel like it's pretty obvious what's going on. I don't have a clue. I'm still biting. <laughs> oh, they're just watching you as you go by. They see the captain with eight. you. It's like, that would be an eight. For what it's worth, does it get me the anything? Insmith treatment. You're getting the Insmith treatment. <laughs> yeah, we're I mean, like strangers in this creepy as fuck town. <laughs> they look too normal. The creepiest part right now is that from yesterday you went from very unhappy, like get the hell out of my town, what are you even doing here, to now they're trying to smile at you, and I mean try in some cases. There's a couple where, you know, they smile at you and perception checks. And Bran, I will take this from you as well. Eight plus... 22. At 20, 26. <laughs> Jesus Christ, 12? <laughs> hey, this is over 10. 15. All right. Anja, Cleo, you just noticed that they're staring at you. Um, Riley... Feel- very oh, unsettled. You notice one of them tries to wave good morning at you, and as the shirt falls, you see scales. Why? These are our fish people? Yeah. yeah but I was going to say, Riley might find there. that normal. Yeah, actually, I, I do find that interesting. I was just thinking about it. I'm like, do they match my scales? My Eldritch transformation scales? That's a question to ask, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good question and to it ask. It makes you wonder that should you be hiding your scales from the rest of the crew? I wasn't intentionally hiding it. <laughs> you may want to start. Really? Uh, uh, Brand, yeah, you just probably <laughs> have the worst as uh, one of the older portlier fellows, <laughs> gangly limb, tries to smile at you. And you were just looking at a marine an- an- ooh, anatomy book. And you could swear as he smiles at you, there's little slits in his neck. Oh god, he's got kills. <laughs> he can breathe them both. That's I keep an eye behind us as we walk to see if anybody's following. 
there are a few people following, especially you. God. No one is following the first three because they don't see it as anything too strange. Oh, their ship's down. They're going to talk to the harbor master, obviously. When they see everyone else heading down to the ship, there's a few people who start to follow behind. But try to look friendly if they see you noticing. Oh, shit. This is uh, like... We continue making our way. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you will catch up to the other three. Catalina, along with your group. I yes. love fish sticks. When are we going to have some of those to eat? <laughs> Roll a d12. Then we will end up being looked at. We're going to eat somebody's mother. I, I was going to say, I think we are the fish sticks. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm just rolling a d12. Eight. Eight. No one heard that comment. You're lucky. <laughs> As no one was nearby. As you start to go through, there is the harbor master's hut. Are you going to just walk by? Are you going to walk in to question Mundo? Are you trying to sneak by? What are you guys doing? I, yeah, I don't see think we're going to sneak by. <laughs> yeah, I, I say, I, I hush. Let's just go straight to the ship. Hopefully we can make it close there before they try and stop us. All right. Everyone roll a... Mm, you can give me a dexterity deception or a stealth check. Whichever one is easier for you. Uh, uh, I'm going to go with dexterity because I roll stealth at disadvantage. All right. What is it? Unless you want me to roll at a disadvantage. 15. No. If you're going with the... Uh, I'm going with Dex. Uh, Dex Deception. We're just assuming, you know, you're just trying to act normally as you walk okay. by. Nothing strange as you walk by. If you're stealthing, you're actually taking the time to be very quiet. Walk through. If I don't make noises, I won't get spotted. So what did we have starting with Riley? Oh, yeah. I was going to go the deception route. That's why I'm like, just walk straight by, clear through, and I yep. got an 11. 11. All right, Cleo? Like, deception, just the roll, right? Not that, that I can do that. You use your dex modifier, and then if you're proficient with deception. Ooh. I know, I'm, I'm a weird DM. I ask oh, for shit. Then I did not get an 11. You got something worse? Yeah, I got a 9. Oh, okay. Well, you, you got a good roll. Dex? Because I, I have I I rolled charisma, yeah. <laughs> oh, what's your dexterity? And what's your charisma? Charisma's plus five, dex plus three. Then she got a twenty-one. Twenty-one. Oh, oh twenty-two really actually. She got this? a twenty-two. You walk by like you own the place. Yeah. <laughs> which is really <laughs> weird because you don't want to own this. She's place. doing a, 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 a Paris Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just, just get some runway walk a little bit. Just since we're staying here next to day, we're just grabbing some cargo from the ship. That's all. And we needed the dwarves to, to help carry our luggage. And I know both um, Anja and I got a 15 stealth. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I got a dex. I did a dex one because I really Yeah, that's stealth. stealth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Riley, while you drag the rest of the group down, you guys managed to pass by Mundo without him visibly taking up anything against you. You climb up aboard the ship with a 16 passive perception, Bran. You notice that the people of the village are starting to come in and a couple of them have gone to get Mundo Fen. Bran, you were going to say something before I... As I'm walking you. by, I'm literally undoing the ropes uh, to the harbor. Okay. And just tossing them up on the ship. I'm not even... I'm Dwarves. not even waiting to see if the ship's prepared. <laughs> um, the captain gives you a strange look, but the dwarves... You own the dwarves at this point. They are with you all the way. I kind of look at the captain, and I just kind of look back the down the harbor. To, oh, you're pointing you know, with your big Kind of drawing feet. her attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see. Let's make sure the ship is in working order, but yes, we need to get out of here. Right now. All right. 
And at that point, yeah, what are you guys doing? Uh, I asked Ken- Ken- I asked Kenza, what do you need me to do? Uh, navigate out of the harbor. Right our fucking <laughs> ship aground. That's what. <laughs> Riley's the navigator. This would be so bad to run our ship aground right here. We're trying to rush, right? It's a little horseshoe bay, right? I just need to thread the needle. Why isn't she? Can't she navigate? (laughs) Yeah, she can, and she will at this point. We're leaving it to her. (laughs) She tells her first mate, Aiden, get everything ready, get the ship anchor up, get the sails out. We're getting out of here. Make sure that the whole repairs are good. To which Aiden says, yeah, they're fine. They finished them early last night. What's going on? Shit has hit the fan. You don't know what a fan is because that's way in the future device. <laughs> well, Shit has, one hit of the, these. has hit the crow's nest. One of these fans. Yeah, it's yeah. One of Shit has hit the crow's nest. And with that, no one has a sailing proficiency. So you need to get the anchor up. You need to get ropes tied off. Anchor is strength check. Ropes are a dexterity. We can go sleight of hand on that unless you guys give me another reason. Someone needs to get the sails down, which is climbing up into the sails with an acrobatics check. Oh, uh, I can do that, actually. Okay. Brand, give me that acrobatics, strength, sleight of hand. Anchor and ropes. You've got to be kidding me. I rolled a one, so six total. Oh, wait, I'm exhausted, to... too, so oh, okay. I have disadvantage, so it wouldn't matter one anyways, yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah, you didn't see any of that stuff then. The gills? Yeah, screw that. You have exhaustion. Uh, you fall down, you take three uh, hit points of damage okay. as you fall off in your hurry to just kind of get up there and do these things. Uh, the other dwarfs are working on it. Anja, what are you doing? Um, I could do, I could do that. I could do the anchor aren't you you're the other one who's strong in this group all right yeah. I'll, i will use i'll try strength uh you said just strength right not not athletics yep. the dwarves are helping you so you can roll with advantage that's good because oh my fucking god not in it's so fortunately the net one doesn't count but i rolled a three so that's a grand total of six it is going to take you some time <laughs> Uh, Riley, there are sails. You can help the them. anchor get up a little bit faster, or you can help tie off the rope. I mean, at this point, if you actually just want to cut the rope, that might even be faster. It's up to you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try and untie the ropes. All right, sleight of hand. Uh, wait, sleight unless of you well. want to do something else. Nah, de- dex is dex. I'm not proficient. Okay, uh, that's a twelve. You manage to get the ropes off the ship. So instead of saving the ropes, just like up and off, you're going to lose some rope, but you're going to get out of here maybe a little bit. But we're going to save our lives. It's all good. (laughs) (laughs) And Cleo. Ropes have been taken care of. There's an anchor. There's the ship sails. Should I? Isn't the anchor like necessary? Or the sail? Anchor is probably most important now, yeah. (laughs) Wait. <laughs> strength. I have like no strength, so Jeremiah can help you. Yeah, I was gonna say Jeremiah's gonna help you, and if you want, okay. roll two d twenty. Tell me what the number is, and we'll use Jeremiah's strength. Just yell at Jeremiah. It'll it'll give him a boost. Um, it's 10, oh. 19. 19. Oh, Okay. You give a look over to Jeremiah and he look back and he just and he pushes Anja, you and a couple of the dwarves are just now dragging as he is <laughs> you know, it's that youthful testosterone yeah, the pretty girl asked me to do something I'm going to get shit done and up goes the anchor the only issue now is you need to get the sails unfurled Right. But, but right? as you do so, the townsfolk begin to yell at you. Uh, I want to listen to what they're yelling. No, how do you do the sales? Sales are acrobatics. I'm actually good at that. Yeah, you can try it. Oh, Chloe, at this you point, can, well. I will, can I be listening? I, I was can like, I... how do I help you? 
Well, at least that's going to be above a 10. Free damage. Jesus fucking Christ. Acrobatics, so that's 15. 15. Get a cartwheel instead. You unfurl the sails. Is anyone distracting the townsfolk? I want to. Can I hear what they're yelling while I'm doing this? They're just. What the hell are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? We're leaving, assholes. I sing them a song. They're yes, welcome. Chloe, go distract the townsfolk. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you never again. <laughs> and Frank is slightly accurate as there are some pistol shots going off now. And oh, the townsfolk shit. start to swarm What after did you. we freaking do? Uh, we're I'm trying like, to flee. Uh, uh, yeah, trying they're, to flee. We're, we're, they're losing their sacrifices, duh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anja, no, 12 would... to hit you is not going to do it? Uh, no. A pistol shot whizzes by your head. Uh, to give you guys an idea, a pistol shot does 3d12 damage. Oh, my God. This oh, is not Harris. the tiny bullets. These are the big, massive ones. Okay, so sails are down, right? Sails are down. You guys are sailing out. And we have ooh, two of the townsfolk managed to jump out oh, with this weird frog-like leap. Oh, they get climbing on? up the side of the ship. May I uh, literally react, rush over there, and literally kick them out from the air? Yeah, go for it. Give me give me an acrobatics. At disadvantage, sadly. Yeah, I was going to say. So you 16 might... and 9. You're not getting over there fast enough. How about Eldridge Blast? Is that fast enough? You can get one of them. Hit them. Yeah! <laughs> uh, where's my spells at? Oh, actions. Let's see. Hit. 23 to hit. That'll hit. And uh, one damage. (laughs) Do I at least prevent them from getting onto the ship? (laughs) You prevent one of them from getting onto the ship. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. The last one begins climbing up the side of the ship. I will go over to... Drop the anchor now. No, it's going to stop. Like, well, I, I'm going over to where he is, by the way, which I assume I can make it after I'm throwing the sails. With your weapons me. drawn. And I will look down and I'm like, like hell, you're getting off this ship. You either can do it. You can either do it by uh, by choice or I'll flip and throw your body off the ship after Ooh. we're done with you. I'm intimidation. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, my today. <laughs> That's a 10. <laughs> I still have my weapons draw. I'm ready for that asshole. If he gets you in don't range, know I'm what you've him. done. What do we anchor now? Why don't you clue us in? What do we do? Brand. <laughs> Go to punch him. Go to punch him. All right, roll to hit. <laughs> Why can't we like tie him up? I don't want to bring. We don't have room on the ship. Remember? You're not feeding him. No, we're gonna. We don't. I don't want him on the ship. Need fish food. Let me double check real fast. (laughs) Thinking on the side of the ship, he's flat. uh, He doesn't get a dex bonus, right? (laughs) (laughs) Choo, choo. Yeah, sure. Why wouldn't he? I'll tell you what. If you're trying to get him off the ship, and that's your argument, you can give me an athletics check, not a disadvantage. Against his acrobatics. Ah. God, my dice are rolling crap for. <laughs> so are mine. Oh my yeah. god. It's been an awful night. Unfortunately, he is on the ship and he right. is going to start taking a swing. Can I command him to tell us what's up? Like, why? And it's can... only a one word, uh, one word command. Yeah. So you say talk, but that means they can talk. <laughs> Jump. Can I intimidate him to tell me what's going on and why we need to stop? Although, Chloe, you can actually command him to flee. Oh, you flee would be a good flee, one. He'd run away. Yeah. Although, I, I might run around here. the ship. Jump. It's up I to think Chloe. Jump is don't, don't, it's, it's up to Chloe. I'm just reminding her she can do that, too. Yeah. He takes a swing at Anja. Yeah. Misses. I can do that with. Can what? I take a swing back? With command. You said you have command. 
No, no, I don't have command. I didn't realize. Oh, I, was- oh, I thought you said you. Okay, my bad. So can I just like make him scared to like be like, you better tell me the truth. I I'm just failed on, on that epically. Yeah, I'm going to say Anja already tried yeah. that. and Yeah, but she's more commanding than me. By a long <laughs> shot. Why don't you tell me what's going on right now? <laughs> Is that what you say? Yeah. Roll intimidation. Doop-a-doop-a-doo. Did you say excuse me? <laughs> excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we roll, though. 17? 17. What happened? You're dead. I'm gonna... And the seas will swallow you whole. Then why would you... And he jumps off the boat. I'm like about to swing at him and I'm like... (sighs) Yeah. Yeah, at this point, you know, he's getting surrounded. He's the only person out there. Not worth it. He just... Not worth it. No, no, no. No, no, no. (laughs) <laughs> Did you want to take it? Uh, actually, no. That's not my character. I'm I, I'm still stuck in the last campaign. Sorry, my my, my character. Ran, if you want to take it, you can. No, I let him go. I just kind of watch, and I will kind of like look back after he's gone and look at the crew and say, "I think he actually might be right." Bye. And with that, it's a good place. The go. ship makes its escape as clambering townspeople. <sighs> watch you from the harbor and you sail off to sea and we'll end it there because we went 22 minutes over damn it Heidi this is your (laughs) fault fuck you Heidi I was was... doing perfectly fine at 10 o'clock and then you showed up I was wondering why you didn't cut it at 10 o'clock actually that would have been a bad point either Oh, I don't remember what happened at 10 o'clock. All right. 10 o'clock is when I was like <laughs> getting the crew and we were walking down the street. Yes, oh, exactly. Shit. All right. With that, Riley, final thoughts. Anything you want to say? Um, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm glad that things went <laughs> somewhat to plan. Um, <laughs> and it will be interesting to see what that threat turns into next week. I feel like that was a good introduction to Dread and Insanity, Rosante was. Uh, so it, it's a good taste to see what Farzim would be like. All right. Cleo, final thoughts. How did you enjoy Rosante? Did they give you a nice fond farewell? <laughs> I just don't understand why they'd be so angry about leaving and then be like, well, you're dead anyway. So like, why, why does it, wouldn't you want us to leave? Like a sacrifice? Like, mm, yeah, something that's bowed out as a sacrifice. You might find out later. I mean, uh, Riley did collect some important information. Some. There were a lot more that you guys missed out on that. Bran, final thoughts? Um, I really enjoyed this episode. Um, I think we got to see a bit more character personality coming out on some of us. uh, And also points of view. Uh, I think that's always a fine thing to help develop characters. Uh, I think we were going to be screwed no matter what, and we're just going to be as screwed on open waters or in land. So uh, I guess it's just bring it. Uh, Brian is probably going to take a long nap. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And Anja. That was really, really cool and really, really scary. And I was, yeah, I was like feeling it. I'm going, oh my God, this is nerve wracking. Uh, very unnerving and very good for a horror campaign. So well done. I actually yeah. almost, I'm almost regretting going to like the pre-written stuff because your stuff is so good. Well, I mean, everything you've done up to this point affects the pre-written. That's yeah, but still, yeah, your no. stuff. Obviously, is really it's going good. to change what's the pre-written. All right, uh, everybody, this is Murder Hobo, the cred campaign. Hopefully, you can yeah. see why we're giving cred to Murder Hobos everywhere. Uh, word to your mother, father, sister, brother, mother. We're not Murder Hobos at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, 
<laughs> I mean, you'll leave a child child to die here in Rosante, but what my choice? I would have taken him with us. All right, guys, you can follow us here on Twitch. To catch out the next show. We got a couple more shows coming up. Friday is Hoosier Con, uh, which is open still. The last I checked, it may be closed. Uh, whatever Frank says in chat, I'm going to ignore and call him a dirty liar if it turns out what I said is not true. Saturday is the Calamity campaign. Sunday is the Margu campaign. Tuesday, between the rolls, where maybe we'll give you some background information about what happened here. Uh, you can follow us here on Twitch. You can follow us on YouTube. Take a look at those archives. You can talk on the Discord channel. Figure out what's been going through these guys' head or ask me a question. I probably will answer it because I'm desperate to tell someone all my secrets. <laughs> I don't okay, you got to make sure that you have like a, uh, uh, a no players uh, uh, channel. A no players and like, channel. <laughs> and like literally cut our, uh, our access. <laughs> I can do that. Oh, actually, I can't I do that for. I can't do it for me. I'm the admin. Exactly. You'll but have to watch everything, up. Carol. Uh, you can go to our store. You can buy some awesome murder hobo. Uh, what's it's that not stuff called merch. Yeah. Merch. Merch. That's merch. The stuff. But it's but not that because that was a special. Not this. This gift. is special. It's because so we special. play. Feels and good. We're cast members. Stop touching Not yourself, Kyle. On so it feels so soft, though. Stop it's... touching yourself, Kyle. That's how <laughs> we're gonna get banned because of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Hold on. <laughs> Talk about the sponsors, Carol. Well, oh, the sponsors are awesome sponsors. Uh, first of all, I will mention our awesome sponsor, Oddfish Games, makers of Adventure Sense. I've had the tavern, the tavern one open this whole time. It smells awesome. So when your game stinks, at least the room isn't going to. And of course, they are also the makers of the Shine System. Uh, so if you want to do some writing, uh, it's a bunch of prompts to help you write. And if you uh, don't uh, roll or if you don't write and your room your roll stink you can go over to pirate dog dice yeah where they'll make you a set of dice that rolls well unless you are carol well Brad, i mean no no DJ, no i'm not using Ernie or i know i've already Caitlin. found out these dice that i got from pirate dog dice for uh they were for for the for taryn because they were commissioned for her carol hey, we have to hey, end let me the show. it only rolls well for her Everybody, else Everybody shit. wave at the camera, say goodbye. Bye. I don't want any more shit talking from Heidi. Go watch I your critical.